Hello, my name is Rajesh Francis and I'm part of the Solutions Architect team at AWS. In this demo, we will see how you can use Amazon Redshift cross-account data sharing to provide access to data securely for your subscribers. Amazon Redshift data sharing allows you to share live, transactionally consistent data across different Redshift clusters without data copies or movement, both within and across accounts. For the demo, we will take the use case of healthcare analytics providers who need to store hospital inpatient bed occupancy data for all the states and securely share with the states who subscribe to this data set. We will take North Carolina and Virginia as two subscribing states, and we will demonstrate how the provider can store data, share real time without any data movement, and audit access of this data by subscribing states, and how the provider can revoke access at any point for the subscribers. For data sharing, the provider stores data in the producer cluster and uses fine-grained access controls at schema, table, or view level to share this data with one or more consumers or subscribers. Subscribers then use their own compute to access this shared data. For the healthcare analytics use case, we use a multi-tenant storage strategy to store data in two tables. One, subscribers to identify the states and the cluster namespace associated with each state and inpatient bed occupancy table to store occupancy details. We will create a view and share only this view with each subscriber to restrict access for subscribing states so they see only their own residence dataset. To enable cross-account data sharing, we have a few simple steps. First, we create the database objects, schemas, tables, and views to store the data. We introduce a new metadata object called data share. You can create a data share and add database objects which is tables and views to the data share. Then grant usage on the data share to the consumer's AWS account. On the consumer side, the admin can associate the retro clusters to the data share, then create the local database pointing to the data share and start querying the data using a three-part notation, which is DB, schema, and table name. Now let us see how the healthcare analytics provider can store and share data with subscribers using Amazon Redshift cross-account data sharing. For the demo, I've already created one producer cluster for the provider and two consumer clusters for each of the subscribers. Please note that for cross-account data sharing, both the producer and consumer cluster has to be encrypted and in a private subnet. First, we will connect to the producer cluster to create the database objects and the data share. We will use SQL Workbench, AWS SQL Workbench, which is a powerful analyst tool to create the data share and share with the subscriber accounts. I have set up the data for subscribers and occupancy. As you can see, the subscribers table will hold the state, the namespace, and the account associated with the subscriber. The inpatient bed occupancy by state table has the occupancy details. AWS SQL Workbench allows us to do some quick analysis on this data with visualizations. We can choose the chart type and add X and Y parameters to analyze which state has more percentage of beds occupied. And we can also share this chart with other users or export this as an image. Since we are using a multi-tenant storage strategy, we create a view to ensure each state has access to their data. The viewers view V underscore COVID inpatient bed occupancy, which combines the occupancy and subscriber tables. And this is the only object that will be shared with the sub subscribers. The current namespace is a system variable which will have the namespace of the consumer or subscriber cluster, who, which is reading this view. Next, we create the data share, which is health share. Then we add the objects, which is schema and tables and views. In this case, it's just going to be the view to that data share. Now that we have the data share ready, we can grant access to the consumer subscriber accounts for this data share using grant usage on data share to an AWS account. So this account is for the state of North Carolina and this account will be for state of Virginia. Once you grant usage on the data share to an account, the admin on the producer or provider account has to authorize the data share using the Redshift console. As you can see here, the data share, health share, which is created is listed and the status is shown as action required. Note that these data shares are listed under the In My Account tab. If you had data shares shared from other accounts, it will be listed in from the other accounts, which you will see on the consumer or subscriber account shortly. 
to authorize the data share, click on the data share and select the account or the list of accounts that you want to authorize. In this case, we have shared the data share with two different accounts, which is which corresponds to two different states. And then you can click authorize. Next, let us see how the subscriber can associate the consumer clusters and query the shared data. Now that we authorize the data share to the two accounts, when we log into the consumer or subscriber account and list the data shares, you will see the data shares available in the consumer account. Let's log into the first consumer account. So note that this is the first subscriber account or the consumer account. And when we go to data shares, you don't see anything from the in my account tab. Since we shared it from the other account, you will see the list of data shares in the from the other accounts tab. So here the admin can associate one or more clusters. The admin can associate the entire account, which will mean all the Redshift clusters in this account will get access to that data share or choose specific cluster namespaces. Here I will choose cluster one, the consumer one, and accept. Now that the data share is associated with the Redshift cluster, we can log into the consumer or subscriber clusters and create a local database referencing the data share and start querying the data. First, we'll connect to the first consumer or subscriber cluster here. I've already connected. Now from the first consumer subscriber cluster, if I show the data shares, I can see that I have the access to the healthcare, health share data share. Now if I describe the data share, I can also see the list of objects. Here I can create a local database, which will be a reference to that data share. Once we create the database, the local database, I can use a three part notation, which is a database name, schema name, and the view name and query the data. Now this is the first consumer or subscriber cluster. So I should see just one state's data, which I have access to here. So as you can see here, I, I see only state North Carolina, and uh, that is the state that's accessing this data set and it's controlled the access is controlled using the view and the current namespace. To demonstrate that data sharing is live, let's first log into the subscriber North Carolina cluster as NC user and check the latest collection date available for subscriber one cluster. We will run this query select distinct state collection date order by descending. Now, as you can see, the latest date available is May 9th. We will also check the number of records for North Carolina and it is 34 now. Now we will log into the pro provider cluster and insert a few records into the hospital inpatient table for North Carolina and see if those changes are reflected immediately for the North Carolina subscriber cluster. Now we are back in the subscriber cluster, subscriber North Carolina. Now let's query the data to see if the data, new data is reflected here in the subscriber cluster. Now, as we can see, the two records that we inserted in the producer or the provider cluster gets reflected for subscriber North Carolina. The producer or the provider owns the data share and can track changes and usage for the data share. Two of the views available are SVL data share change log, where the provider can view any changes to the data share. Here, as you can see, there has been changes to add objects to the data share. And the other view is SVL data share usage producer, where we can see the usage of the objects in the data share. For example, in this case, we can see that the view COVID inpatient bed occupancy has been accessed a few times. At any point in time, the provider can revoke access to specific objects in a data share or the entire data share from an account. Now let us revoke access from the North Carolina account starting with seven. And when the subscriber queries this data, the subscriber will get an error. So this data share is revoked. Now let's log into the North Carolina account and check if the subscriber can query this data.
will connect to the subscriber cluster which is North Carolina and now when I see the data share there is no data share available and if the subscriber tries to query the data set which is the view the subscriber gets the error which says data share does not exist. We encourage you to try Amazon Redshift data sharing today and for any questions you can reach out to redshift-data sharing at amazon.com. Thank you.